What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at the Kilhoman PX cask. Stick around. So we have a cool one today. We have a pretty new release from Kel Holman. This one came out earlier this year. I believe it was in May. Uh, this is the second of their two annual spring releases. We've got the PX Sherry Cask Matured. I'm sure a lot of you out there already know that I'm a huge fan of Kel Holman. They're one of my favorite Isla distilleries and just one of my favorite distilleries in general. Uh, I think they have a great house style with some really interesting and dynamic whiskeys. And in my opinion, they make some of the best peated sherry whiskeys out there. Uh, peat and sherry is not going to be a combination that's for everyone, but when it's done right, personally, I can't get enough of this stuff. Uh, I've long been singing the praises of the Loch Gorm, which is one of their premium signature peated and sherried expressions. They also have a more affordable option called the Seneg, which where I live comes in at an entry level price tag. Uh, it's one of my favorite entry level expressions from Isla, so they make really good stuff. And I got pretty excited when I found out that there was a new PX or Pedro Jimenez uh, sherried release coming out. This one comes in at 50 ppm, which is very respectable. Uh, we have some more details here. Uh, a total of 33 casks were used to make this whiskey. Uh, nine of which were given a full PX maturation and the remaining 24 were PX finishes for a period of 12 to 18 months and we only got 12,000 bottles of this released. This one's a vatting of vintages from 2015 and 2013 so we have six and eight year old whiskey in here and I gotta say I really like that Kilhoman does that. They're a great brand for transparency especially with their more premium expressions like the Loch Warm or this one here. Uh, you get a really detailed breakdown. They'll tell you what barrels were used, duration of finishes, all this extra info and I really appreciate that. Anyway, uh, in my market this one's a little bit more expensive than the Loch Gorm, but it also comes in with a slightly higher ABV which of course is a good thing. But the most dramatic difference we're going to have between this and the Loch Gorm is the style of sherry. Uh, Loch Gorm is going to be an Olorosa matured whiskey. This one of course is PX. And honestly I tend to prefer Olorosa matured whiskeys. They tend to be darker and more layered. By contrast PX whiskeys are usually sweeter, but you do have some absolutely killer PX whiskeys out there. So you never know. Um, so with that said, why don't we hop into our review of this one, see what it's all about, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So Kilhoman always gives us good specs. Our ABV on this one comes in at 47.3%. Of course it's going to be non-chill filtered, and of course it's going to be naturally colored, the way it should be. We have a beautiful dark color to our whiskey here. Um, I absolutely love this bottle presentation. Now I'm a fan of Kilhoman bottles in general, but I especially like this kind of like aqua green color scheme that we have here. Some really nice gold borders. Beyond that, it's pretty much your standard Kilhoman look, which I think is great. So presentation score here is gonna be five out of five. Non-chill filtered, natural color. We've got 12,000 bottles here. Um, the Luck Gorm came with like this little tag around the neck that gave you the extra production details. My bottle didn't have one. Uh, you have to find all those extra details on the website, which is fine. Uh, we've got some tasting notes on the back. Overall, it's just a great look. Um, yeah, I love this bottle. Let's try our nose. So big peat, big sherry, which of course, not surprising. Um, cherry cough syrup, candied strawberries. There's like a little hint of red wine tannins in here. Subtle. Definitely some like sweet barbecue sauce in here, some caramel. Maybe a little bit of like honey mustard in here. Definitely some raisins. Some oranges, some leather, some meat. And some berry jam. Let's try our palate. Mmm. Nice, full, thick mouthfeel. Um, big peat, big sherry, sweet sherry, um, hazelnut, marzipan, uh, more cough syrup, that cherry cough syrup, more of those candied strawberries. Um, there's like green olives in here. There's some ash, some earth, some licorice in here, some meaty notes like glazed ham and hot dogs. Now our finish. Okay, uh, this is kind of a continuation of our palate. Uh, things do get a little bit nuttier here. I'm getting all kinds of nuts. So like pistachios, walnuts, maybe even like hazelnuts in here. 
more of that candied strawberry note that's been there throughout. Uh, hot dogs again, uh, candied fruit. Maybe some like creamy chocolate mousse in here. Uh, again with the green olives, black licorice, and cherry cough syrup. This is medium in length. All right, so I'm not gonna keep you guys in suspense. I do like this one and like, of course I would. Uh, in my book, Kilhoman and Cherry, always a winning combo, but I do like that this one is different enough from the other releases to really distinguish itself. And I think having this beside something like the Lockworm is a great way to illustrate how different types of sherry affect your whiskey. Uh, I used to think that sherry was just sherry, it was just kind of like the standardized flavor profile, and that is very much not the case. So if you have something like this beside maybe the Lockworm, and maybe even last year's Fino release, you start to realize just how varied the world of sherry can be, and something like this gives us a classic set of PX flavors, which as I mentioned earlier is a particularly sweet kind of sherry. So be warned if you buy this bottle, this one is going to have a more candied approach to sherry. Which is why I think on the whole Olorosa is slightly more respected than PX when it comes to its effect on whiskey. And I mean, I actually kind of get that. Um, this one, we do have a lot of sweetness in here, but it's less layered and more obvious than what we get with the Loch Gorm. Which isn't to say that this one doesn't have layers or complexity, it still does, just less. Um, but it's still fun as hell, it still packs some really big flavors. So I mean, yeah, this is another peated sherry banger from Kilhoman, so no complaints here. And we do have some really cool notes in here from like olives and hot dogs to licorice and cherry cough syrup. So it's definitely not your everyday character. And I also think the peat gives us some really cool like barbecue style notes, like this mesquite brown sugar style barbecue sauce. So it is really cool, it is really fun. If I were to have one complaint, it's that it's almost too sweet. Almost. Uh, with those like sweet barbecue flavors, those cherry notes, those candied strawberry notes. Um, I do think that the Loch Gorm is better for a few reasons, one of which is that it just has a more restrained sweetness to it. So my score for this one is going to be 87. I think it's good, but not great. Uh, it doesn't challenge you in the same way that some other Kilhomans do. It doesn't have the depth or layers as some of their other expressions, but what it lacks in nuance or complexity, it makes up for with just sweet, loud fun, even if it's a little obvious. This is a whiskey that's brimming with character. I do enjoy it a lot, but even me, I always talk about how I'm a sherry guy. This one is on the verge of being too much. Uh, so don't approach this whiskey looking for like nuance or subtlety. You're not gonna find much of it here. So as I said earlier, the Loch Gorm is gonna be the better whiskey. It's still gonna be my top pick from that distillery. And I actually think I enjoy the Seneg more than this one too. Seneg is another Olorosa matured whiskey. And the advantage with that one is that it's part of their entry level lineup. So we're gonna have better value on that one than we are with this. So I do really like this whiskey and I'm gonna recommend it, but the value honestly is not great. Uh, in my market, as I mentioned earlier, this one's more expensive than the Loch Gorm. And I think the Loch Gorm, as I said, is a more nuanced, rounded, just better whiskey on the whole. So yeah, I do kind of have a tough time saying this one's worth the money because it's not a cheap whiskey. And even within Kilhoman's lineup, I think there are cheaper, better options than this. So unless you've got a sweet tooth, uh, I think there's better Kilhoman's to be had for the money. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried Arkill Holman PX Sherry Cask? What were your thoughts on it? Finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.